It's Father Vogel. We continue our series on St. Francis de Sales' Introduction to the Devout Life. We continue part three on the virtues. We're in this section of five chapters looking at the proper way to use our speech, engaging in conversation about God, about others. The previous video, we looked at rash judgment that we should avoid, uh, speaking about others. And now we look at a, a, uh, a related uh, sin, that of slander. So slander, or also called culminy, which uh, is a bit more broad than slander, slander specifically about the use of uh, speaking, is making false or defamatory statements in order to damage someone's reputation. That's what slander is all about. Uh, St. Francis says that whoever unjustly ruins the good name of his neighbor commits sin. Moreover, he has the obligation to make amends through differently, though differently, according to the various kinds of slanders. So if we destroy someone's reputation saying, saying uh, especially false things about them, then to be forgiven of that sin requires a kind of restitution of making up and righting that wrong. Uh, as, as best as we can. Uh, slander, he says, we can think of as being the real plague of conversations when we begin to talk about somebody in this negative and, and really lying about, about them. He says slander is a kind of murder. So sin takes away our spiritual life when we sin. Death takes away our physical life, but slander takes away the, our social life, our life of how we're looked at by other people by killing our reputation. He says, with a single stroke of his tongue, the slanderer usually commits three murders. He kills his own soul and that of the one who listens to him by a spiritual murder, and he takes away the social life of the man whom he slanders. So. Slander is a kind of murder in three different ways. It murders the one who's doing it because the sin kills us in our soul. It's murdering the one who's listening to it and, and believing it and joining in on this, you know, gossip about, um, about this other person. And finally, it's killing the other person as it destroys their reputation and their, their good name. He says, be aware of attributing false crimes and sins to your neighbor, of exposing those which are secret, of exaggerating those that are known. Neither interpret badly his good work, nor deny the good which you know to be in him. So there's many different ways in which we can commit this kind of slander against someone. Um, he says, don't attribute something that's false to them. So that's, that's lying exposing things that are secret or things that may be true but are actually nobody knows about we shouldn't be revealing those or exaggerating the things that are known even if somebody knows something we shouldn't you know bump it up a level and say well no actually this is what he did um, he says the double sin to lie and to do harm to our neighbor at the same time I mean, lying in and of itself is a sin regardless of what lying is about but when it's purposefully lying to hurt somebody else then it is even worse. And then he notes a, a kind of a subtle example that we might use. Um, it's kind of a kind of a noticing something good in somebody while at the same time pointing out the fault. He says, "I love him, and that and all that. Otherwise, he is an excellent man. Nevertheless, he does do such and such." And so St. Francis says, don't you see the craftiness of this? You know, you're building somebody up and saying, oh yeah, he's great and all, but this thing, did you know he did that? Um, and we do that uh, at times. That's a kind of slander. We need to cut that out of, of our, the way we speak about others. He says also, the defamation told in the form of jokes are the most cruel of all. You know, for, for jokes, we're making light of another person and we're making light specifically bringing forth oftentimes a truth about someone but we're doing it in this 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 destructive way and it's it's cruel because 
you know, it's being put forth as though this is a good and lighthearted thing, when actually it's really destroying their reputation. Even the form of, uh, the form of, of uh, lying that involves revealing something true about another, though that, that's something that shouldn't be revealed, is called detraction. And so that's related to this area of slander. So he says, do not say that so-and-so is a drunkard, even if you saw him drunk, or that he is an adulterer because you saw him commit this sin. For a single act does not justify such labeling of a person. To attribute the name of a vice or of a virtue to a person, there should be some progress in it and it must become a habit. So just seeing one moment of a vice or even a virtue doesn't make that person, doesn't define who that person is. And so it isn't right, it isn't true to label that person because we recognize that one instance. It gives the example from scriptures of, of uh, when Jesus was in the house of, of Simon and you know, Mary Magdalene comes in, he sees her as this great sinner because, I mean, she had been one, but St. Francis says, nevertheless, Simon is lying because she was no longer a sinner, but a very holy penitent. You know, so we don't know what the state of somebody is if since you know, we, their past sins, now they have, they have undergone a great conversion. Uh, we can't judge that if we don't know. He says, yesterday must not judge today nor today judge yesterday. It is only the last day which judges all. Yes, yeah, so we want to make sure that on the last day, you know, when we go before the judgment seat of the Lord, we have asked for forgiveness for all of our own faults. But that's the only day that, that judges. Before then, whatever we have done in the past can be forgiven and we can become a new person in the future. He says, hence we can never say that a man is wicked without danger of lying. We can say, in case we are obliged to speak, is that he did a wicked act. He lived badly at such a particular time, and he does evil now. But we cannot draw any conclusion from yesterday to today, or from today to yesterday, and still less from today until tomorrow. So that's one of the, the distinctions that we pointed out in the last chapter when we talked about rash judgment, is that we're not supposed to, we can't judge the state of the person's soul. We can judge that particular act and say, yes, indeed, that was an, an evil act. But we can't judge as to whether or not that is a habit of that person or if that's going to continue to be their habit into the future. Though in this, in this being careful of not to say something false about somebody else, we can fall into the opposite extreme, he says of even praising and speaking well of vice, of sin. And he says, we must not cherish, flatter, or encourage other vices with the intention of avoiding the vice of slander. We can't fall into the trap of, you know, calling what is bad good. He says, we must speak plainly and sincerely of evil as evil and find fault with things deserving blame. And then he's gonna give some conditions, three conditions by which we could, can rightly criticize or point out the fault. He says, if there is a usefulness for the person of whom we speak or those to whom we speak. So if we can bring up that this action's bad, especially to that person who's doing it, if there's a usefulness to help them not do it again, to undergo conversion, or if it's going to help those to whom we speak so that they're not scandalized or drawn away into thinking that something bad is actually good. Secondly, it says that we would be obliged to speak uh, if we're one of the principal persons. So if we have a kind of authority. So like for example, parents pointing out something that isn't good, you know, if the child sees that, so that way they're not drawn into it. Or, you know, somebody, a teacher or, you know, the priest who is an authority needs to point out when something it is that is, uh, is a vice. He also says one of the conditions when we're pointing it out is do not say even a single word too much. The incision which I should be so, the incision with which I should 
sorry, the incision which I, sh which I make should be so precise that I say nothing more or not nothing less than what it really is. So we're trying, if we're trying to point out uh, a sinful act, we're, we have to be like the surgeon who comes in and he's trying very carefully to take, take out the disease or the, the cancer without harming that which is good. So we must be the same way as we don't want to exaggerate, we don't want to give people more information than is really necessary to be able to, 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 to speak the truth. He also notes that we may speak freely when it's a case of a notorious public and well-known sinner. But once again, there's a condition that we do it with a spirit of charity and compassion, that our desire is for the good of those that we speak or for the conversion of the one who has committed those. Uh, now he's going to point out one way that we can kind of go into a kind of, of slander that's pretty popular at our point right now. So he says, each one takes the freedom to judge and criticize princes and to speak ill of whole nations, depending upon the variety of feelings one has towards them. Philothea, do not commit this fault. Besides offending God, it may involve you in a thousand kinds of disputes. So this is very clearly the kind of atmosphere that we've been, we've grown recently in our country when it comes to politics and the just toxic environment that we see there. But St. Francis says, don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up of the criticizing of leaders and, and all these kinds of things. It's not going to be helpful. It, he says, you, you're gonna get caught up in all these kinds of disputes. It's, it's not going to lead, as we, as we see in our society, it doesn't really lead to any kinds of real solutions. So he says, you know, to avoid this. What about the case in which we hear others do, do this? You know, we get, we're in the session where others are, are gossiping. You know, gossip is usually going to be the area in which we, we put forth a lot of these, these kinds of slanders. Um, so what if it's other people who are doing? How do we react? He says, when you hear anyone speak ill of, make the, accus make the accusation doubtful if you can just, if justly do it. So if somebody points out, you know, oh, so-and-so, you know, did you hear about what they did, da 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 well, you might, well, are we sure that that's really what's going on? You know, maybe think about it in this other way. You know, casting doubt that really that is the evil that has been done. He says, if you can't, if, there, if you don't have an ability to, to make that doubtful, he says, excuse the intention of the person accused. So, you know, we might be able to see the external act, but we can't judge the internal intention unless that person makes it explicit. And it's like, yes, that individual did that, but did they really mean to do that? You know, maybe they meant well. Um, so it really, in, se in a sense, trying to assume goodwill of others rather than assuming they're trying to do something uh, to harm. He says, even if this cannot be done, show compassion for him and change the subject of conversation, reminding yourself and the group that those who do not fall into vice owe it all entirely to the grace of God. So that's a really good thing to do. When you get caught up and others are, you know, you're, you're beginning to talk about somebody else to, to really kind of change the subject. Or it might even be the case in which, well, you know, let's pray for that individual because just talking about them is not going to help them in any way. You know, and the reason why we haven't fallen into those kinds of things, St. Francis says, is to recognize it's entirely God's grace. We very easily could fall into bad, bad habits as well. He says then also to recall the slanderer to himself in a gentle way. So that's a very hard fraternal correction to do is, why are you speaking about that person, you know, in that way? That's not right. Or, or say something good of the offended person uh, if you know it. So try to, to speak. That may be true that they've done that, I don't know, but I know that they're also very good when it comes to this other area. So we wanna be very careful in the way that we, that we are tempted to speak ill of others, especially in the form of gossip or um, 
and can be caught up in this sin of slander. So by God's grace, let us uh, use our words uh, more for, for others' good rather than to tear them down. God bless.